Hello and welcome to another PowerShell quick tip. This one is on how to really maximize the use of PowerShell script modules and it's using a technique I call dynamic function loading and modules. Catchy phrase, right? Um, I'm wearing my Mission from Mars hat that I got from Microsoft Workshop a while ago on IoT development and uh, the mug that went with it. So love product branding, <laughs> especially when I get free stuff. So kind of have a lot of different mugs. I don't have a PowerShell one yet. I'm going to work on that. I've got to get one of those. But anyway, uh, my name is Brian Kafferke. I'm a data and AI solutions enabler at Microsoft. I really focus a lot more on machine learning, honestly, but I'm fascinated by PowerShell. So every now and then I, I quite a bit actually come back and do videos on PowerShell as well. And uh, part of the reason I wrote a book, which is riveting. I have it right here. So I read my own stuff, my own dog food type thing. I actually use it a lot as a reference because I have a lot of script examples that I just couldn't find anywhere else. And I forget how I did half the stuff that I wrote in my book, which is, I know, scary. Uh, but I go back in here and it's like, oh, wow, yeah, that's right. That's how you do this. There's a lot of stuff to PowerShell. It's a very wide and deep ecosystem of tools. It's not really a simple scripting language. So it takes a lot to get to master it. And that's really why I did the book. So hopefully if you get a chance, take a look at it. This particular technique, I don't believe I've covered in the book. I kind of checked. I don't think I did. So something new. So let's start with the problem. And if you're not familiar, it's we're really talking about how to really maximize the use of PowerShell script modules. Script modules are written in PowerShell code and they provide reusable functions that we can then just load the module and use. So similar to DLLs, Python's got modules, or everybody has modules of some type. If you're not familiar with those, how to code them, etc., in PowerShell, I have another video on that. So go take a look for that. I'll put those at the end of my thing, links to those you can click on. But go take a look at that because this is not meant to teach you how to code PowerShell modules. Instead, it's meant to address a problem that I discovered early on with PowerShell modules, which is if you have large script modules with lots of functions, it can get really difficult to maintain them, right? So you imagine you have a couple hundred functions do all kinds of, maybe it's related to security or whatever. And with all these functions, it can be really difficult. You just want to add one little function or maybe it could change to one, but you're going to have to edit this massive module, um, which means that you're going to have to update. So when you want to deploy that and make it available for people, if you're using source code management, which is a highly recommended best practice, checking in your source code, it means that you're checking in and out an entire module, perhaps 20,000, 10,000 lines of code, when all you're doing is changing a little function that could be five or six lines. Doesn't seem like a good idea. Consider that maybe somebody made changes to that file that you don't know about. And since you're only worried about one little function, you're probably not going to test all the other functions that could be affected by somebody else's changes. So the idea is we want to isolate when we're deploying, making changes, etc. We want to isolate that. This doesn't allow us. By default, we don't get any isolation like that. So it's source code management hack, keeping this clean for the kitties, uh, but source code management hack. And the goal here is parsimony is king. I like the word parsimony, it's a weird word, but basically it means no more, no less than what is needed. Just the right amount. That's the idea here. So what's the solution? Well, we wanna keep each module function in a separate script file. If we could do that, then I could have one that sends email and somebody says, oh, could you add a logging that when somebody sends an email, you write it to a log file, I'll say, sure, I add that feature into that function and I just check that one function in, deploy it, meaning copy it to wherever it needs to be, test it, et cetera, and it's all isolated. That's the ideal. On the import though, I need to make sure that module goes and loops around and loads all the functions that are in separate files. I don't wanna to have to clobber them together. I don't want them in one place. I want them to be kept separate. So how do I do that? Well, dot sourcing turns out to be the key. Dot sourcing is PowerShell's way of allowing us to take a file and say, bring it into memory and keep it there. So we're gonna leverage that in this technique. I have a whole video on that, of course, so go check that out if you're not familiar with dot sourcing. So this is the place we say, show me the code. My PowerShell area here, let me clear this out. And I wanna show you, I have a script already loaded here, but where it's coming from on my own system where I've been testing, it's, if I go here, you can see under my own folder, documents, windows, PowerShell, slash modules, that's where modules will automatically be looked for at your own local place of keeping your own modules so you won't affect other people. And you can create any modules you want in there. Now, the only requirement with that is you need to have a separate folder for each module. And I like to notice some of these say things like 
show MBRS, rough draft, all these things. These are not ones that I created. And you can see I have a lot. So how do I know which ones are mine? Well, mine, I always put UDM or UMD used to be my legacy way of doing it. I like UDM, user defined module underscore. And then we're going to be talking about this one, application. And then we've got two different files here. You have to have a module of the name of the folder. This is your actual module name. It's what you're going to type in when you say import module. And so I say UDM underscore application, and it has to have a PSM one extension. So we've done that. I've already got it loaded. And uh, disclaimer, of course, you know, use this code at your own risk. I'm giving it guys sharing. It should work fine. It works fine for me, but obviously test your code. Don't put anything to production without thoroughly looking at it, testing it and all that good stuff. And obviously um, doing, you know, uh, verifications and cert using certificates, et cetera, is a good best practice. Uh, but that's the, so there's my warning label. So we're going to start with this whole idea. We're going to create a, we're going to point to where the function is. There's a little not well known variable created dynamically in PowerShell called PS script root. Now, by default, if I just say, I want to see what's in there, PS script root is nothing. It's dynamically set by PowerShell when you run a script and it points to the current folder. This is handy because this means we can, in our script or in our modules, which is just a script, when it's running or being imported, when you import a module, by the way, it actually executes the code in that module. So you can do pretty much anything. When it's running, PS script root will point to that folder. Now, this is not only useful for what we're going to do, but if I wanted to put data files that the module could load, I wanted to read configuration settings, I want to read anything I want, really, I can use PS script root as a way to make it so that module can get data, any access to anything it needs and keep it in that same folder, et cetera. So it's really a handy little variable to be able to get access to right here. And what I want to do is I'm creating, let me just show you. I have this little subfolder, right? Three functions in here invoke add number, multiply number, and subtract number, really riveting functions. But the idea here is that it's I'm going to be tacking on a subfolder from PS script root. I wanted to keep my functions separate from any other stuff I might have. So I can just go in here, check in or out, various script files, and I'm good to go. I don't want to have to, I'd be afraid I might miss check out. I would <laughs> probably do that. Miss check out the master uh, module script, which I don't want to mess with. So I just leave it there. So here it's going to get a path to where the functions are. And then here I'm just getting a function list and that says get child item. If I take a look here, if I do a DI, well, let me do it this way, get child item. Let's just get a folder list, right? But what if I said dollar sign my DIR equal get child item. Well, Watch what happens now, my DIR. It's going to just list it, right? So it just brings it all back. So it's actually stored that entire list, all these attributes, properties, everything, actually. It's, PowerShell is a very rich object system, so it's giving you a lot back in that little variable. There's more to it. It's an object collection, really. So what I've done here is I've created this function list as really an object collection, which has the entire list of the contents of that folder, uh, which means it's got the list of my functions I want to load. And then I can set up a little for each loop and grab each function that's in the function list. And then I can dot source it. Okay. And by dot sourcing it now, those functions will be available to me to use just as if they were sitting in the module script file, but they're not. Now, a couple of things to notice about this also is there's nothing specific going on here. So if I decided like I'm calling it UMD application, you could say, oh, I want to have a security module. You could call it UDM underscore security put it in a separate folder and then just put your security functions in the function subfolder and that's the module so this is a generic reusable module script that we can use to to do this really nothing fa fancy here um yeah, so we can use it for any number of modules we want and i have several places where i do that the main thing is the real contents in the function library so let's go and try it out so i'm going to do clear host and clear my screen there i'm going to say import module and verbose and let's see what it does so you can see when i do verbose it actually tells me it's importing these functions all right so we know it works so invoke i'll just try one of the functions and sure enough it added one and two so that works if i want to see what are the functions available or commandlets the proper name you can see these are the commandlets 
Yeah, and I, I try to stick with na command let naming convention. So that's when you don't really know what to say it does, you can always go with invoke. That's a proof verb. Uh, UDF, add number. I like to say to UDF, use a defined function. So I can tell these are my functions. Again, I like to make sure I'm clear who wrote this. If it's Microsoft's, hopefully it's not going to break. If it's somebody who put something out on GitHub and I download it and have problems with it, well, I know, okay, well, that was, you know, a third party thing somebody wrote five years ago and it's not compatible with the new version of PowerShell or something. So that's the idea here. So I know that works. Now, if you're wondering what's this force, when you are, especially when you're testing modules, if you want to make sure it clears out and reloads the module, the force parameter will do that. So just using the verbose together with that gives you a little more information. It shows you it's unloading these functions, right? It's also telling you, proving it is getting the functions from the right place. And then it's exporting and re-importing the functions. And so we get access to those. It's really all there is to it. I have this show command over here available still. That was one of my other videos. Go take a look at that. All right, so that's the gist of how to do this. And it's really powerful because now I can, if I go in here and just take a look at something, I'll say open, so I can take a look. And I wanna look at, say, add numbers. Now I've got a nice little function, small little file, all of two real lines of code, right? But it lets me now isolate my functions. I can check them in and out. I can use GitHub and keep it all isolated. Let me go back to my riveting slides. So reviewing this, what are the benefits of using a technique? Well, like this. One is I get that generic PowerShell module, just copy it where I need it, rename it, rename the folder I need it to, blah, 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 good to go. I can add functions just by copying a function to the folder, remove a function just by deleting it or copying it somewhere else, you know, moving it out of that folder. It makes it really easy to manage changes to the code. It's really good too because imagine you have a function that's breaking your module. You don't even have to, if you can figure out, oh, it's it's the add user command let, you could just move that out for a while and at least the rest of the module will keep working. So it makes it really easy to fix problems too. So wrapping up, we learned that there can be problems maintaining large script files and how do we deal with those? And we talked about that and we learned that there's a way to do that by using the dot sourcing technique I showed you. Probably other ways, explore, share with your friends, but they think that's a pretty good way to handle it. And you get some good benefits, mainly maintenance, maintainability is really the key, being able to keep things isolated. Parsimony is our new word for the day. So I wanna thank you for watching. Please subscribe, let people know about this uh, channel.